Hey everyone and welcome back. So I was asked to do a few more videos where I focus on how we will do a pagination on the back end. And that's what I'm going to try and do now. I'm going to try and show you at least one way you could do it. Um, the full stack is not set up for pagination on the back end as of such, but it doesn't take that many changes to actually get up and running. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to try and show you right now the difference in the current application I have. and. Uh, I'll of course add a link for the first video where you can get this code so you have something to talk from or work from. But right now when I do a refresh here, I've just added my network here so I can see what's going on. And um, you'll notice that instead of be as before where we just added this line right here, let me just try and zoom a bit here, where we just added this line right here saying syllabuses, now I actually have a question mark and now I also add limitation of how many syllabuses to get from the backend per page and also what page am I actually on right now and actually also how do I sort this? Is it title, is it reverse title, etc, etc. And I'll just show you a few more uh, examples of this. So if I do change the sorting, let me just uh, find this one. You'll notice the difference is that now instead of saying title, it actually says minus title here instead. I'll zoom even more just to make sure that you guys can actually read this. So notice the difference is that before we didn't send any information about sorting, paging, or limitation of how many um, items we wanted back from the server, but that's what I'm doing now to limit the amount of data that I get from the server. And if you look at the response, you'll actually see that I'm getting a list of documents and in here there's 25 documents only from the backend. So I've actually moved the pagination part to the backend and that's what I'm going to show you in the next videos how you can do that using a few very cool plugins that I'm going to show you in a second. I just want to add you one more, show you one more thing because right now there's nothing about searching here, no filtering, but I can actually do that. So let me just go up here and write 10, press enter, and now you'll notice I'm only getting 25 back with the number of 10 in there somewhere, right? And if we go down here, you'll notice that in the new request that I just made down here, it's actually also added a search field in here that says 10. That could also have been a text. So I've pretty much made everything running on the back end. And I just want to show you before we move on to the first real video about this setup, I want to show you just the guys who've, uh, who, whose data I've used to actually make this possible. The first one will be the one we've already played with. I've used a way of the Angular directive that we used to actually make pagination on the front end, I've changed that. So instead of doing normal data, it's using asynchronous data now. So that's one step that we have to accomplish. And again, there's a lot of information. The link is right here. It was the same that I did in the Angular pagination movie a few videos ago. So you can go ahead and read there about it and then you can look at the async data if you want to move ahead. The other one I've used is this guy, Mongoose Pagination. Now that's going to give us a few headaches and that's another step I want to show you because this guy requires Node.js to be 4.2 or more and Mongoose to be 4.2 or more. But the problem is that on our OpenShift setup as it is default, we have way too low version of Node. So I'm also going to teach you guys how you can actually upgrade your Node versions on OpenShift. Very important skill to have. Um, so that's what the next videos are going to be about and sorry for the long intro, but uh, see you next time.